Hello, Arthur. Pause and welcome. Today, I want to go over the expectations associated with the introduction and research plan. Um, so before we get started, uh, two main things about this project. One is it's kind of the larger parent project associated with the 2.6 demonstration of understanding. So ensure that you reviewed all the feedback, resources, um, expectations associated with that assignment um, because they will definitely help you to do your best uh, in terms of this introduction research plan. That's kind of your draft and this is the real thing. Uh, so pay attention to that. Second piece is that I want you to focus on this is the first big component of your biodiversity project. So remember that we're going to be following that new set of guidelines or the project rubric guidelines um, as part of this assignment. So be sure that you're providing your best product associated with that. So let's go ahead and jump in with the expectations for the introduction research plan. So this is in this project, you're going to be working as a group. You're going to work with your biodiversity project group. You're going to submit one document. Um, and here's the plan we're going to be working on this all week, um, hopefully four days. It might take you a little extra, so I've given you a little extra time to work if you need to. Um, but this is my kind of layout or expectation. So we're going to work through analyzing the study sites day one, day two, study design and research, day three, procedure and review, day four, format and finalize. Now, of course, it's an agenda just to keep you on track. You might need to spend more time analyzing your study sites um, than somebody else. That's okay. Um, the last few days don't, or I feel like don't require as much time as the first two. So that's okay if you need to push that pass a little bit further. Um, but just kind of an expectation on the guidelines. Um, so in terms of each of the sections, analyzing the study sites, I'm not going to jump into real um, in-depthly about this part because um, it's about identical to the 2.6 demonstration of understanding. The really big key difference is as arthropods, right, you're going to be studying different parks. So if I have two people, I'm going to have a total of six different parks, three per person, which means that in terms of my introduction research plan, I'm going to have to analyze six different sites. So in terms of that information for that site description part, it's going to be a lot more lengthy than it was in the 2.6 demonstration of understanding, but hopefully you know how to do it now much more quickly and it won't take you as much time to get through that. Um, a, two key, uh, a few key points and hints um, to help you. Uh, one, make sure that you're being uh, coherent, cohesive pieces of writing. Don't just write like bullet points of information. Don't write just sentences of information. Try to make it um, a dialogue discussion of the information uh, because that looks a lot more professional when it's put together. The second piece that I want you to pay attention to are a couple pieces is don't forget that when you're recording topographies, when you're reading them online, most of the time they're in feet, so don't forget to convert them to metric. Second, always record values to the hundreds place. Um, few key errors I see consistently. The other is um, ensure that you're providing a metric distance for context. So remember my perspective of what is close versus what your perspective of what is close are different. Um, so providing that metric distance helps to differentiate what my perspective of close actually is. So please don't forget those as part of analyzing your study sites. But otherwise, it's all the same. If you do need questions about any particular piece, make sure to reference um, the 2.6 demonstration of understanding instructions on that site, and it'll go over that in detail. The next piece is your study design. And this is going to um, be much different than your 2.6 demonstration of understanding because for that assignment, you were asked to compare your study site to Walnut Creek Metropolitan Park. And it was proposed so that we could see, okay, can you think through uh, how to create a good study? Also, we went through some examples to kind of help you illustrate. We played a game. You picked which study design was better. So please reference that as you're trying to think through what works for your given study locations. Um, so for this part, you're actually going to be looking at all of your parks. And this is the most common confusing piece that I see is that, um, so if I have two people, right, um, each person is in control or uh, responsible for three parks. That means I have a total of six parks. So for my study, then I'm going to be looking for something or some way to compare those six parks. I'm not going to be looking inside the parks. I'm going to be looking at the park as a whole. 
So for example, if I was going to study maybe elevation, right, I'm going to be looking at average elevations or to topographic reliefs or maximum elevations at each park. And then I'm going to use that to compare the parks so that I can have ideally, right, so if I had two people, six parks, ideally I'm going to try to have two that have a high, two at a medium, and two at a low. Um, of course, if I can't make that happen, that's okay, but that's ideally what I want. Um, so I'm trying to find a variable that makes sense, that changes, and has a sufficient enough, enough change that I can compare them. Uh, that's your part of design of study. So you want to do that after you've analyzed your sites so that you have some information about what you can actually study in relation to them. Then what you're going to do is put together your purpose. That's just a statement stating what your study is. Don't forget about if you have two variables to state that second one so it doesn't look like you're trying to just ignore it. The hypothesis is the biggest place where I actually see mistakes um, because students forget to provide a rationale associated with why they're hypothesizing something. Um, and that's the difference between I'm not making a guess, I'm trying to make an educated guess. So for example, if I'm studying the abundance of arthropods based on proximity to water, uh, I'm not going to just say that I hypothesize that there's going to be more arthropods closer to water. Okay, that's not as <laughs> helpful. I might um, hypothesize that a certain there's going to be a higher abundance because of blank said conditions. Maybe that um, more arthropods present, I'm going to find more arthropods that are appreciate water or need water um, more or thrive in a more, I don't want to say wet, but wet environments. Uh, is what I'm looking for. Some rationale that supports why you're making that statement. The second piece is that rationale should relate to the research that you've done a part of, as part of your background information. So if I'm researching and I find that most of the time arthropods are not found near water and I hypothesize that they will be, those two are contradicting, which is okay, but I need to have a rationale as to why I think that the literature is wrong or why I'm trying to challenge the literature. Um, so make sure that you're referencing key pieces from your background information. It doesn't need to be like a full paragraph associated with it, just a short little um, phrase or statement that's relating it to what you found. That also relate, pushes us to our background information. For this assignment, you're going to need to find three scholarly articles. Um, associated with your assignment. Now be sure that these three scholarly articles um, are related to your purpose. They don't have to be directly related. So a lot of times students get mix, um, mixed up because they can't find something on arthropods in Austin. They can't find something on arthropods in water. Um, that's okay. Remember, it can be indirectly related. So it might be arthropods anywhere in the world. It might be a particular order of arthropods um, or family or species that a study was looking at. That is all okay. It's all about trying to relate it because you're essentially trying to provide new information to the literature. So it's okay that we're not finding studies on what you're doing. That's fine. We want to try to find something related to it um, indirectly that we can put into our background information. Also make sure when we're discussing that literature that it's a cohesive discussion, not just a um, a reciting of the actual study. So it should be more along the lines of something that is um, cohesive discussion related to your paper. So you don't have to write the title of the article. You can just say a study by blank and blank um, was looking at this. Make sure to talk about the methods. How did they get to their answer? How does that relate to this paper? Because that's the whole purpose. If you find more than three, awesome, put that in your back pocket and keep it because you're probably going to need it later on in the project when we have to find some more. So don't stress if you find any extras you don't want to use just yet. You can use them later. If you want to use them here, also fine, um, but just keep that in the back of your mind as you're looking through. The last step is your procedure and review, which is an add-on from the previous assignment. So you're going to need to write out a material or provide a list of materials and write out a step-by-step -step procedure. Now, the materials can be verbatim copied from the handout. The procedure needs to be changed in terms of the perspective. When you read it in the handout, the perspective is written from a teacher, a teacher to a student. Um, this should be more written as a researcher's um, or a studies procedure. Um, and what I mean by that is if you look at the handout, the handout says, create a Google Sheets that lists data from iNaturalist. 
That's great and all because you need to know that to complete the assignment. However, the study is, does not need to know that information because it, if I'm an audience reading a study, I'm not, I don't necessarily care that they put their data into Google Sheets, Excel, or did it on hand, it, or did, read it, uh, wrote it out. That doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is what they collected and how they analyzed it. So be sure that you change the perspective of the procedure, but it can otherwise be relatively the same. Um, so you don't need any of the nuances that are associated with student expectations. Lastly is references while well, in review. Um, in terms of references, ensure that you're following the expectations in um, the Journal of Nature. So in science, we don't necessarily follow one system or not. <laughs> it really depends on where you're submitting. Your article or your study is what expectations are going to be set. So what I want you to do is follow the expectations set by the Journal of Nature or Nature Journal um, because it is one of the most prestigious scholarly journals um, in the world. So check it out. It's relatively straightforward. If you do have questions, let me know. The last piece is a review. If you want me to review your project, go through it. Um, please submit that by Wednesday at 4 p.m. That means you're gonna need to post your group name to the Padlet as well as a link with edible access to the assignment. So then I can look through it. Give me some time because I do really look at them meticulously. Um, so it will take me a second to get through all of them. That's why I have that deadline <laughs> so that I can get them to you as quickly as possible. Um, but then once you've got your review or if you didn't get a review and you had another group look at it, that's fine too. Have another group, check it out. Have your group members look over it. Um, check out the example um, and format and finalize it. The formatting is following the same guidelines that we did in 2.6. The only difference is you do have a few more added sections, but the guidelines on how to format them are already provided. You also have the feedback on 2.6 to address that. Um, and then that final thing is checking the example just to make sure it follows what uh, my expectations are. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free, reach out, make sure to use all the resources available on Blend in the resources module. Check out any of the videos from 2.6, the review from 2.6, um, so that you have a good finalized project to submit to me. Um, but other than that, thanks for tuning in.